In this tutorial, we're going to just wrap up a few things, just kind of clean up the scene and add a few more items. So to begin with, um, we've been using a perspective camera in our scene. So that just shows you that you can use these 2D animations with a perspective camera. But uh, typically, 2D animations work really well with ortho camera. So let's go ahead and change this to an orthographic. You can see if we do that, everything's really big. So we actually need to change the size of this. You can see it's getting a little better there. So we have our ortho camera set. Now we probably need to make our background just a little bit bigger. So let's try to big. So now we have a background. We have our target. Let's move our target over a bit. So now it's looking more like a, a game. Now a couple things we want to do here. We want to actually, it just kind of looks like the knight and the target are floating. So we can add in some effects so that uh, we have some shadows behind these. So to begin, we're going to create an atlas. Let's call it effects. Go ahead and open the atlas. And we have a couple effects here. We'll just drag them both in. We have a shadow and a hit um, texture, which we'll use in a second. We'll rebuild these, and let's create a couple shadow sprites. Rename this. Shadow over here. I probably want to change the color because it's a little dark. Just kind of lighten it up a bit so it just kind of looks like he's not floating. He's got some depth. Same with this one. This one we might actually want to rotate a bit just so it fits the profile a little better. So you can see how we can use props in our uh, sprites as props in our scene. Okay, one other thing we want to do is we want to make this knight actually move when we move back and forth. This is not strictly a smooth moves um, thing, but uh, I'd like to just kind of wrap it up and make it a little more clean. So let's go ahead and go to our code. And then when we move, we're going to need a speed. So let's add in a public variable for that. Now we can just pull the local transform of the knight, or we can just use the boat animations transform since it's attached to the same object. And I've cached the local transform, so we can just use that. So let's say if if the key, the right key is being held down, then we'll move. If it's not, then we'll, we won't move. So we'll use the knights. the cached local transform. That way we won't have to reference it every frame, uh, which is a slow, slower method. We can just use this, or we can cache our own, but uh, it's already there, so I'm going to use this one. And since we're going to the right, we're going to move him along the x-axis, speed times the 
delta time so that if there's a jump in frames, it'll move them a little bit farther. And let's go ahead and do it for the left arrow as well. Only we'll subtract instead, so he'll go the other direction. Save that. Play. I got an error. No. Sorry about that. IntelliSense went to vector 2 instead of vector 3. And <laughs> need to put in an actual position instead of just the transform. Okay, my errors are gone now. So let's try playing. So if we move forward, he's not actually moving because we didn't set a speed. Let's go to our knight with inspector. I'm going to change the speed to, I don't know, 100 maybe. Too big. Okay, so now he moves with our arrow keys. Looks like he's moving a little too fast. I think it wasn't working before because I had the wrong arrow right or I had the right arrow key for both and it was offsetting. Uh, it was left or see right and right so it's adding and then subtracting so now I have right and left so 100 might be good enough let's try that now it's a little bit slow let's try a little bit higher okay that looks good now I see the shadow is not moving with them now I don't want to actually drag the shadow into this um, transform as a child because like I said before every time we make a change to our animation it wipes out the structure and rebuilds it so it wipe out the, the shadow so what we can do is either attach it at runtime or we can just make the shadow follow that position um, I'm going to actually make the shadow follow that position because attaching it I will have to make an offset and everything so let's just make it follow or no, actually, I'm going to show you how to attach it because it would be a good exercise and how to get a, a, a bone. So let's get a reference to the shadow. And once we have that, we can make it a child of a bone. We can use the get bone transform and pass in a name. We'll just try root. The shadow is just going to attach directly to the root. So once it's been parented, that should work out. But the offset is going to be whatever the offset is now plus the root. So we need to set this shadow's position. Back to zero, it's local position back to zero. That should do it. So now when I run, the shadow should jump and attach to the root. Oh, sorry, I have to actually make a reference to it. I just have it here, but I need to actually attach it. Now it should jump to the root. Okay, so it became a child of the root.